So in this session, we will discuss the structure questions related to topic group two and group seven. So the first one is on page number 11. Before that, all of our MCQs, as we have discussed some of them uh, the last session. This question is about some element of group two and their compounds. Magnesium reacts slowly with cold water, but it reacts rapidly with steam. For each reaction, name a magnesium compound form and identify the other product form in both reactions. So when magnesium is there, it is mixed with cold water. What will be the product? The product will be magnesium hydroxide. And when magnesium react with water, as a result, what will be the product? So magnesium react with cold water, it will produce magnesium hydroxide, MgOH. And magnesium react with steam, the product will be magnesium oxide. And what is the other product? The other product is hydrogen gas. Calcium chloride can be uh, formed in two ways by reacting calcium with different reagent. Write an equation with state symbols for each of these reactions. So we want to produce calcium chloride. If basically, we want to produce a salt. So if we want to produce a salt, we can react acid with metal or we can react acid with metal oxide or metal carbonate or metal hydroxide. So just two equations we have to uh, include their state symbol or even there's a direct combination like i can mix calcium in a solid state with chlorine in a gaseous state when they combine it will produce calcium chloride ionic compounds are solid so this will be solid or calcium is a metal i can react with hydrochloric acid as a result when it the calcium metal solid and the hydrochloric acid is all acids are aqueous as a result most chlorides are soluble except silver mercury and lead so calcium chloride will be aqueous and acid plus metal gives salt and hydrogen gas so there will be hydrogen gas or bubbles will be seen so these are two ways even you can mention metal oxide if you mention calcium oxide then there will be water if you mention calcium carbonate then there will be water and carbon dioxide. If you mention calcium hydroxide, then there will be calcium chloride plus water. So these are the ways by which we can produce calcium chloride. In thermal decomposition of a group two carbonate can be investigated using the operator. So what we are doing, we are supplying the heat energy when the metal carbonate decomposes. It gives off carbon dioxide and then the carbon dioxide will pass through a lime water which will turn milky in the presence of carbon dioxide this lime water turned milky or chalky so state why it is necessary to remove the delivery tube from a lime water as soon as heat is stopped like the moment we stop the heat we should remove this otherwise what will happen because there will be a difference in the pressure and that difference in the pressure cause the lime water to rise in the test tube or which we can also say to avoid um, movement of the lime water or sub back of lime water into a test tube or otherwise the test tube might crack due to a sudden cooling. Is it clear? Part C that why we should remove before removing the heat like example as in why it is necessary to remove the delivery tube like why we should remove this delivery tube from a lime water as soon as heating is stopped. The moment we stop the heating the lime water because the difference in the pressure the lime water will move there and it might due to a certain cooling it might cause a cracking of this tube so first we should remove the delivery tube and then we should remove the heat source give the formula of a chemical compound in the lime water that react with carbon dioxide so lime water is basically aqueous calcium hydroxide and that calcium hydroxide is reacting so we have to name that and give a formula so calcium hydroxide formula is caoh2 identify a chemical compound that is responsible for cloudiness 
So which compound? Because when calcium hydroxide mixed with carbon dioxide, it will produce calcium carbonate. So CaCO3. Magnesium carbonate, it's a four mark. Magnesium carbonate took two minutes of heating to produce enough carbon dioxide, which will make a lime water cloudy. State and explain the trend in the time of thermal decomposition. Uh, state and explain trend in the time taken for decomposition of group two carbonate as we descend, as we go down the group. Remember, thermal decomposition always increases as we go down, like it becomes more stable. So if you have magnesium carbonate, magnesium carbonate will decompose in a short time as compared to calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate decompose in a short time as compared to strontium carbonate. So the thermal stability as we go down the group, that is increasing. And what is the reason? It's a four mark. So how you uh, mention, how you write. So here it increases. What is the reason for that? As we go down the group, the size of the positive ion is increasing. Like magnesium is smaller in size compared to that of calcium. Calcium is smaller in size compared to strontium. These positive ions have a tendency to polarize. And smaller positive ions, they all have the same net charge. But smaller positive ion can cause more distortion. So reduces the strength of the negative ion. Here calcium carbonate, carbonate will be less distorted. Strontium carbonate small amount of distortion. So when we mention here in terms of distortion, so as we go down the group, the size of atom increases or we can say the charge density, charge per unit volume decreases because charge is the same, but the volume is increasing. So charge density is decreasing. Then what is the effect of this charge density? So smaller positive ion can cause more distortion. can cause greater distortion or polarization and as a result of this polarization it reduces the strength of so we can bonds in carbonate which result so it weaken the bond in the carbonate what it result in decomposition or thermal decomposition at lower temperature so these are the points which you should include when you are writing the answer for this type of question is it clear Explain why a saturated solution of barium hydroxide is more alkaline than saturated solution of magnesium. So as we know, this is about the trend in the solubility. As we know, solubility increases as we go down the group. For hydroxide and nitrate, it increases. For sulfate, it decreases. So when we have magnesium hydroxide, it is less soluble as compared to barium hydroxide. So when barium hydroxide is more soluble it produces more hydroxide ion as compared to the same amount of magnesium hydroxide because like if um, when we say magnesium hydroxide is less soluble it means like example 
if we have 100 molecules out of 100, maybe uh, out of 100, maybe 50 of them, example, 50 of them break down into ions. But when we say barium hydroxide is more soluble, as we go down, the solubility increases. So when it dissociates into barium and hydroxide ion, out of 100 molecules, maybe 90 of them will dissociate into ions. So if 90 of them dissociate into ion, more hydroxide ion. And if you have more hydroxide ion, the solution will be alkaline. So the answer here, you will mention the solubility increases as we go down, in, for increases for hydroxide as we go down. So down the group, the solubility is increasing. So in case of barium hydroxide, it contains more, more hydroxide ions. That's why it is more alkaline solution. In this question, the color seen in a flame test is a characteristic of a metal ion involved. For example, a barium ion gives a green color a calcium ion gives a yellow red color explained with reference to the electronic transition involved how these flame colors are formed and why the flame colors are different first thing what is the reason for the flame color formation when electron jump from one shell to another shell it absorb energy so this is the electron here the electron when we place the sample on the hottest part of the flame so it absorb energy as a result when it absorb energy it jumps from a lower level to higher level and when it because this electron does not belongs to this shell so with the after some time it will return back to the same original level as a result when it return back to the same original level it will give out energy which is equal to difference in the energy of the two shells and that energy correspond to a color and why different elements show a different color because like even the distance between the shell is not same for elements even though like example this is shell one then for other element shell two might be closer and then shell three will be there so because the the shell gap between or difference between the shell is not same for all elements that's why they are giving a different colors so this was explanation but how to write the answer, exam point of view. So first you will mention the electron absorb energy from lower level and it jumps to higher level. So electron excited to higher level by absorbing energy. excited or jump to higher level by absorbing energy but that electron does not remain there as a result what happened the electron jumps back to lower energy level gives energy which correspond to characteristic color and uh, why because the last part they asked why there's a different color for uh, different elements so because the difference like different metals have dif uh, different energy levels or difference in the energy level between the shells or you can also say energy levels
that's why they give different characteristic colors is it clear that so you should always use the term number one electron excited or promoted to higher energy level by absorbing a heat energy from the flame you can mention because from where they're getting then electron return or jumps back to lower energy level or dropbacks to a lower energy level and they're emitting energy and that energy should be in the because if they, they are able to see the color so they're emitting energy or you can also say photon which is a light particle in a visible range then light which is there in a visible range correspond to a characteristic color and then the diff why different metals are giving a different characteristic flame color as they have different gaps between the shells so this is always the case for the observation of flame color if we are not able to observe a flame color even though like example magnesium metal is placed on the uh, hottest part of the flame but we are not able to see any flame color that is not due to that it is not emitting it is emitting but that is not in a visible range our eye is sensitive to 400 nanometer to 700 nanometers any wavelength associated with the energy if it's higher or lower we are not able to detect that so magnesium is emitting out but that's not in a visible range So sometime in uh, MCQs, you may find this question that why we are not able to see a characteristic flame color. So in that case, you will mention because it's not in a visible range. A solid magnesium, a solid calcium hydroxide is known as a slake lime. Over 1 million tons of slake lime are produced annually in UK. The lime water is an aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide. Lime water is used in the lab. To test the presence of carbon dioxide lime water is a weak base a weak base you can mention ph 11. right equation including a state symbol that take place when a lime water is used to confirm the presence of carbon dioxide aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide contain calcium ion and hydroxide ion so we uh, this part we have to write the equation for that so we have calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide so calcium hydroxide is there we add carbon dioxide as a result it will produce calcium carbonate plus water but we have to use a state symbol so lime water is aqueous calcium hydroxide carbon dioxide is a gas calcium carbonate is a solid that's why the lime water turned milky and water is there as a liquid An aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide contains calcium ion and how many moles of ions are there in one mole of calcium hydroxide. So how to work out more total moles of ions. So if calcium hydroxide is there, when it dissociates into ion, it will dissociate into calcium Ca plus and it will dissociate into two hydroxide ions. So what is the ratio between one like mole of calcium hydroxide to total number of ions so one molecule is having three ions one calcium and two hydroxide so ratio is one is to three so how many moles of ions are there so there will be three moles of ions because one mole of a molecule gives three moles of ions then how many moles of electron are there in one mole of hydroxide so how many moles of electron are there in one moles of hydroxide so how we can work out as you can see hydroxide with having a charge of minus one so oxygen is having eight electrons hydrogen is having one electron and this extra electron minus one means there's an extra electron so total number of electrons which are present in hydroxide are 10. So how many moles of electron are there or how many electrons are there in one mole of hydroxide? So it contains 10 moles of electron because if we have one mo molecular ion of hydroxide, it is having 10 electrons. So if we have one mole of hydroxide ion, it will have 10 moles of electrons. So that's why 10 is the right answer. Is it clear this one?
Any doubt in this question? So you just have to use the ratio, the mole ratio. The slate lime calcium hydroxide can be prepared by calcium carbonate in two stages. Outline this preparation would be carried out. Include an equation in each state. State symbols are not required. You do not need to include any detail operators, but you should mention any essential condition. So how this can be done? A slate lime is we want to produce. So first what we do? Uh, thermal decomposition of a calcium carbonate will produce calcium oxide and carbon dioxide which is a quick calcium oxide is called a quick lime and then to this quick lime we will add because what is slake lime slake lime is calcium hydroxide and lime water is also calcium hydroxide but it is aqueous like dissolved and we want to produce solid so first what we should do, uh, thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate should be done. So thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate, what will be the product of this thermal decomposition? It will, the calcium carbonate will decompose into calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. That's one thing. Then what we will do, we will add a small quantity of or you can say drops of water, not too much because we want a solid. So as a result when calcium oxide, uh, the quick lime we add water so calcium oxide is there plus H2O so it will result in a formation of calcium hydroxide. So first a thermal decomposition is there. So you when you mention thermal decomposition or use high temperature you will get one mark. Then you mention the equation like here calcium carbonate decomposed to calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide that will give you the second mark. Then the third mark you will mention adding small quantity or drops of water to calcium oxide and the fourth mark is for just writing this final equation. Coal fire power station produces sulfur dioxide. This pollutant gas is toxic and is caused an acid rain. Sulfur dioxide combined with water and oxygen in the atmosphere to produce sulfuric acid. Write a balance equation. Include a state symbol for this overall reaction. So what happened? We have sulfur dioxide is there. It is mixed with water and oxygen in the atmosphere. And as a result, what it produced? It produced H2SO4. So we want to write a balance equation. Basically, to balance oxygen, we add water and uh, two oxygen are already there. So we need two more oxygen. So that's why we put two. So water is there balance, like oxygen is balanced. Then about hydrogen, two multiplied by two, four. We add proton, but we don't have to add a proton because uh, it's already there. So we put two here because two multiplied by two, four. So this is balanced in terms of hydrogen. In terms of sulfur, there are two sulfur, so we put two, so sulfur is also balanced. Now what about oxygen? Four multiplied by two, eight, and we have two, two multiplied by two, four plus two, six plus two, eight. So this is the balance equation for formation of sulfuric acid from sulfur dioxide and water and oxygen from the atmosphere. One way of lowering the amount of sulfur dioxide is to pass the waste through calcium oxide. Explain why calcium oxide would be expected to react. So why we expect calcium oxide? Calcium oxide is a metal oxide or we can also say it's a basic oxide. So calcium oxide, why we expect it to react? Because it is a basic oxide and basic oxide can react with acid. That's the reason. 
why it will react with sulfuric acid or sulfur dioxide. Magnesium is in uh, magnesium is the eighth most abundant element in the earth crust and is found in a number of mineral deposits. The different compounds are given. Magnesite is there, dolomite is there, cassurite is there. Uh, these minerals and uh, Epsom salt, different description is there. Uh, draw a label diagram for, of experimental operators that could you use to form magnesium oxide from the mineral. So, how we can produce magnesium oxide? From magnesite, basically thermal decomposition is there because this is a carbonate. So when I supply heat energy, this will decompose into magnesium oxide plus carbon dioxide. So what is the apparatus for thermal decomposition? As we, if you check this, the first question which we solve, that is actually a apparatus for thermal decomposition. You have to draw this. That here you will have magnesite or magnesium carbonate. You will apply heat energy on this right hand side. There will be a lime water connected by a delivery tube because magnesium carbonate decompose into magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. So this solid will turn into magnesium oxide and the carbon dioxide gas given off, which will turn the lime water milky. So that you have to draw there. Observation at the test, because we will test with the lime water, it will turn milky or chalky, right? Uh, magnesium oxide can also uh, be produced by heating magnesium hydroxide. So when we heat magnesium, when magnesium hydroxide or metal hydroxide is heated, it will result in a formation of metal oxide plus steam. Because the temperature is high, so you don't find water in a liquid state, it will be steam. So equation must be balanced. Equation is already balanced. Then we have to include a state symbol here. Magnesium or hydroxide is in a solid state. Magnesium oxide is also solid and water in a gaseous state as the temperature is high. Then suggest a formula of group 2 hydroxide which is more soluble. So as we know solubility of hydroxide as we go down the group, it increases. So any hydroxide we can mention, magnesium is there at the top. So below magnesium, we can mention calcium, we can mention strontium, we can mention barium. Any we can write here. So below it's calcium. So I can mention calcium or any other hydroxide. As we know, the solubility increases going down the group. Magnesium oxide can also be is easily produced by heating magnesium in air. However, magnesium oxide is not the only product because magnesium also reacts with nitrogen and it forms magnesium nitrate. Suggest the formula of a compound form when magnesium reacts with nitrogen gas and explain how this product forms even though uh, nitrogen gas is very stable molecule. Give one practical suggestion how this alternative product can be avoided. So first thing, what is the formula of magnesium nitride? Magnesium is group 2, so plus 2 valency and nitrogen is group 7, so a group 5, so minus 3. We cross multiply, so the formula will be Mg3 and N2. Then how this product is formed, what is the reason for formation of the product? Because when we burn magnesium, combustion or burning of a magnesium is exothermic reaction. Exothermic means it releases energy. Like when magnesium is reacting with oxygen, it forms magnesium oxide and the reaction is exothermic. And that energy which is released will break the bond of nitrogen molecule and then it is able to react. So burning of magnesium or reaction of magnesium with oxygen is exothermic which release heat energy and what is the effect of this heat energy which is released the energy break the bond 
of nitrogen molecule or N2 or nitrogen nitrogen triple bond and that's why the nitrogen reacted with magnesium and what we should do because we are carrying out in air so we should carry out the reaction in react oxygen with magnesium in inert environment or in the presence of so in the in in, in in inert environment or we carry out this reaction in the presence of like um, say argon or helium so when we carry out this reaction in, in an inert environment then there will be no further reaction of magnesium with other substances so we can avoid this product the unwanted product as magnesium nitride The flame tests on a magnesium salt, such magnesium chloride, uh, produce no color. Describe the electronic transition involved in a flame test and suggest why there is no flame color. So, in for magnesium chloride. So, uh, first thing you have to write why there is a flame color and then why magnesium is not producing a flame color. So, one mark is for mentioning electron move to higher. So, you will find this question repeated and similar question is there. So one mark, you will mention electron promoted or electron excited or jump to higher, then it return back and it, then it release or radiate or give out energy. But the last step here, this energy is not in a visible range. So electron jumps to or excited to higher level. or higher shell by absorbing energy from the flame that is one thing then second what happened electron return to the lower level then release the energy or you can also say photon because that's a light particle but why for magnesium we are not able to see the color the energy release is not in the visible range from magnesium That's why, so this energy is not in a visible range for a magnesium. That's why we are not able to see any characteristic flame color. Uh, is it clear uh, this question? This is a similar question and you will find repetition is there. This question repeated many times that they ask why there is a characteristic flame color is there for different element or why the L flame color is different magnesium nitrate is another salt of a magnesium it decompose so when metal nitrate is heated it gives metal nitride plus uh, sorry when magnesium nitrate is heated uh, because nitrite is there when sodium and potassium nitrate are heated other than that when magnesium nitrite it gives magnesium oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen so we'll see a brown gas is released or a brown gas is given out. So we have to balance this equation. So what number is here? Same number should be on with magnesium because they, these are the only two compounds of magnesium. So three multiplied by two, six. So we have two, two and so one. So we put two, mag, oxygen is balanced. But when we put two for magnesium is balanced now and what about nitrogen? 2 nitrogen, 2 multiplied by 2. We have 4 nitrogen, so we put 4 nitrogen. 
Then to balance oxygen, three multiply by two, six multiply by two, 12. So we have to, to four multiply by two, eight plus two, 10. So we need 12. So that's why we put four, uh, like two we put here so that we'll have four oxygen and total sum will be 12. Give formula for reagent that could be used to produce magnesium sulfate from magnesium oxide. So whenever we want to produce a sulfate salt, we need sulfuric acid. If we need nitrate salt, we need nitric acid. And if we need chloride salt, we need hydrochloric acid. So here we need magne uh, sulfuric acid to produce magnesium sulfate from magnesium oxide because metal oxide plus acid gives salt and Uh, magnesium oxide plus acid gives salt and water. Hydrated magnesium sulfate has in the formula MgSO4.xH2O. In Ipsum salt, the value of X is 7. The value of X can be determined by heating the known mass of the Ipsum to remove the water of crystallization. Water of crystallization will be removed. Student carried out determination that originally he was having a 5 gram of Ipsum then the mass decreased to 2.55. So means the hydrated, hydrated salt, hydrated magnesium sulfate, it was 5. And anhydrous, when we remove, that is 2.55. So how much is the mass of the water? If we know the mass of the water, so we have to just take a difference of the two to know the mass of water. So it will be 5 minus 2.55. This will give 2.45. That will be the, because hydrated means contain water and hydrous no water. So difference will give us the mass of water. So 2.45. Then this 2.45, that's the mass of the water. We need the moles of the water. So moles will be 2.45 divided by molar mass 18 so that is equal to 0 0.136 moles now we want to take a ratio because so we should know the moles of magnesium sulfate as well so 2.55 is a, basically this is a mass of magnesium sulfate and this is a mass of magnesium sulfate plus water of crystallization so 2.55 the mass of magnesium sulfate divided by molar mass magnesium is 24 sulfur is 32 oxygen is 16 multiplied by 4 so when we work out, it will be 25 divided by 120. So it will be 0 0.021. So these are the moles of magnesium sulfate. Now we need the simplest ratio between them. So magnesium sulfate to water, their mole ratio 0 0.0211. And this one water is 0 0.136. To take a simplest ratio, we divide by smallest value. So 0 0.0211 and 0 0.0211. So this will be 1 and this is about 6.43. 6.43 but because the water of crystallization should be a whole number like you cannot have like 6.5 water molecule so that's why it is about 1 is to 7. So if we have one molecule there will be 7 molecules of water. Is it clear this question that how we work out the water of crystallization present in hydrated compound? So first, taking a difference of hydrated and anhydrous, we get the, this is the mass of the water. And using the mass of water, we got the moles of water. And this is the mass of anhydrous. We get the moles of anhydrous and take the ratio between anhydrous moles and water moles. We will get the simplest ratio between the water of crystallization present in this compound. Any doubt till this point? Okay, uh, so I'll share another link. Uh, 